Before we start this video, I just wanted to do a quick announcement. I love films and I'm a filmmaker and I'm actually developing a new film. And this film that I'm directing has been given some initial funding, but I'm looking to crowdfund some more funds for the film. So if you guys are a supporter of the channel, you like what I do and you want to support me, please be sure to go to the fundraising link in the description below. It's on Indiegogo and donate as little or as much as you want to support the film. This really would mean the world to me, guys. I really, really would appreciate your support if you can spare as little as you can. It's a horror film. I think you guys are going to like it. It's going to be good fun making it. And also there are lots of perks. So if you donate, you're not just going to be supporting me and the filmmaking but you can also be featured in the credits with your own name as a special thanks there are also certain tiers where you can become a producer on the film like an associate producer an executive producer and there is even for the people in the UK and the surrounding area and people who can get to London there is a tier if you donate at a certain amount you can come and actually be on the set meet me and become an extra in this new film so the link is in the description below to the fundraiser for my new film which is titled The Nightmare Around the Corner. I would really appreciate any support and if you guys want to be featured in the film, please be sure to go support it by clicking on the link below, share it around and donate what you can. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this review. Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2 Episode 8. Today we're going to be doing my review for the episode and also breaking it down. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DCTV videos later this year okay so Superman Lois premiered last night its latest episode later tonight the flash is going to be on this video is going up a bit later than usual I apologize I've just been super busy and I'm going to be pretty busy so trying to fit in the videos at the times that I can but today's video we're gonna kind of combine a little bit of a trailer breakdown with my review and breakdown of last night's episode so without further ado let's go ahead and get into the review and then we'll talk about the trailer after and what it means for next week's episode of Superman Lois that being episode 9 so right at the start of the episode we go back and at first I wasn't certain where we were but then you can kind of tell by Natalie's haircut that this is in the past and this is Natalie on her earth rather than Earth Prime so whatever Earth that turns out to be and so you see Superman, the evil Superman, facing off against John Henry Irons. We've seen that before. So that's just reiterating what we already know, that he chased after him, he wasn't able to stop him. And then John Henry Irons eventually ended up on Earth Prime due to mysterious circumstances. We've speculated it's Crisis on Infinite Earths related. And because a red wave hit him, we presumed that was probably the antimatter wave. And in this episode, we get further exploration of what happened. And this time we see it from Natalie's perspective. And so you see Natalie and her AI, who is seemingly French. She definitely had an accent. So it's funny that they went with that type of AI. But anyway, so they lose connection with John Harry Eyes' ship because Natalie from their warehouse got into a sort of spaceship as well and tried to track her dad. But he goes off the radar and she's tracking him. And so there is some sort of anomaly and he disappears off the radar. And that's when we cut back quite abruptly to present day where we see John Henry Irons who is awake and he's there with Natalie and he's lost part of his memory because he thinks that Lois is his Lois. And obviously that was quite an awkward moment, but you also realize, oh, maybe he's been damaged much more than we've been told before because he did take a big beating by Bizarro. And that was like two or three episodes ago. Like we haven't seen him in a while. We haven't seen Nasty in a while. And people have been asking where are they? And they are finally back. And it's good to have them back. Because I really do like specifically John Henry Irons and his story. And it's interesting to see Natalie's perspective of how she got to this earth. And we get a bit of explanation. And it seemingly is crisis related. But for now let's move on to the next thing. So we have Kyle, Lana and Sarah who talk. And it's all very awkward in the morning and then later Kyle returns and Lana they talk and they basically go over the campaign and come up with some answers about what she might reply if Mayor Dean says some specific things angled towards them. And this is pretty much it for the episode in regards to them. We also find out Kyle has his own apartment. 
So I wouldn't say much went on with them this episode apart from going back into the pain that they're going through and preparing Lana for her next confrontation with Mayor Dean. Okay, so let's move on from here. We have Clark and Lois who talk about how Natalie blames Clark and basically Clark realizes he needs to find a way to show Natalie that he is a different person and that he is himself. And one of the ways Clark realizes that he can have a better relationship with Natalie and Lois can is if they actually move away and they have their own place so they can kind of settle down and occasionally run into them rather than being around them 24 7 as a constant reminder of the person that they lost and the kind of life that they lost before and then just after Clark and Lois talk about Natalie they shortly go on to the topic of Jonathan and the ex-kryptonite and trying to find out who supplied the ex-kryptonite so they call the boys down Jonathan and Jordan come down and he still won't reveal who supplied the drugs and Jordan in this episode becomes suspicious especially at one point in the hallway when he's talking to Sarah where Sarah has revealed that she wants to be friends with Aubrey and wants them all to hang out together so it's not weird however he is distracted as he sees down the hallway Jonathan's girlfriend Candace being harassed by someone asking about an ex kryptonite inhaler and so this is the point where he becomes suspicious and he kind of figures it out but later in the episode when Jonathan is in need of Jordan's help because Jordan uses super hearing and hears that Jonathan is being attacked by the kind of thug in this episode who is all juiced up on ex kryptonite and he goes after Candace, tells her to get into the car, basically all intimidating and actually fights Jonathan. But Jordan shows up and at that point I was like, oh my god, it's going down. Superboy is here, like he's fully got the hood on, you can't see who exactly he is. And he beats the living hell out of him and I thought that was a really cool scene. And it kind of teased what we're going to be seeing more in the future with Jordan becoming Superboy. And this is actually teased in next week's trailer as well because Superman goes missing, which we'll talk about in a minute. But basically it teases, oh, Jordan needs to do more because he has these powers. And if he can use his powers in a good way because he's been trained a little bit by General Lane, that means he can do some good, especially with Superman gone. And so let's move on to the next thing. So we have Bizarro, Ali who meets Lieutenant General Mitch Anderson. And at first I was like, is this our Ali? Is this our Lieutenant Mitch Anderson? Or is this in the Bizarro world? But then you see the red lighting outside the windows and you're like, okay, this is the Bizarro world. And then we cut to real Lieutenant General Mitch Anderson on our Earth, on Earth Prime, where he realizes everything that Ali said was true and so he's just gone through that process and Ali is ready to ascend and she's like come now let's become gods and so they kind of get ready to do what they have to do in order to ascend to Bizarro World and Chrissy also in the next scene after this goes in the van with the rest of them in hazmat suits and so clearly they are very wary about what's going to be happening and as you know with Bizarro, he came in literally a big tanked up mecha suit which was just able to sustain him but with them going in hazmat suits, it's pretty flimsy compared to what he had. So that obviously spikes some warning signs, especially with Chrissy. And so shortly after this, General Lane realizes that Mitch Anderson has the pendant because he looks in his office where the pendant was once before but it's not there anymore. So they kind of figure, oh, he's taken it, but what could he actually want with it? Is it some sort of ransom that he wants? Or because Superman mentioned Ali before, has he gone to Ali and has he given her the key to the other world, the key to become a god? And at that point we cut to the mines and we see, in fact, yes, Ali and Mitch has taken out everyone and also Chrissy's there and we suppose that Lucy is there because they all go into the mines, all of the followers, obviously it's very select few of them, they can't bring everyone with them because I don't think they have that many hazmat suits and they probably want to actually go there first in order to prove that, you know, this travel between the other worlds through a literal portal actually exists and they definitely need to make contact with the other versions of themselves in order to kind of merge and it seems they have to physically go there rather than going through the kind of pendant process where you see the other world but maybe you aren't necessarily in the other world 100% and so you get to see the portal to the bizarre world 
and it's all glowing blue and it's got some red at the end of it and so they all begin to ascend one by one into the portal it looks like they are ascending into heaven or something but no people start to scream and you're like whoa what is going on because people are like morphing in and out of themselves basically being stretched into two and at this point superman hears them at the mines but he isn't able to see anything because it's all lined with lead and superman is able to save chrissy and everyone is freaking out loads of people kind of disintegrate as they go through there we don't know are they alive did they actually die when they went through we don't know but they all kind of presume that they're dead but the one person that gets through and probably does make it through is lieutenant general mitch anderson and that is because he takes the ex-kryptonite, takes the pendant off of Valley, grabs it off of her, and he goes through. I think he's going to be strong enough to go through, unlike the other people. I think they've all probably died, which is obviously sad, but that's their own sacrifice. And Chrissy was this close to going through, but Superman saved the day, and he's able to stop everyone. There's like a couple of other people, and also Ali is captured by Superman and brought to the DoD shortly afterwards. So the big question is, what is Mitch going to do? Because now he's got the pendant, is he going to go to Ali on the other world? I don't know, it seems like he's been a bit selfish here. Considering that he left Ali behind and grabbed it for himself and went through. So, is he going to become a literal god by linking up with his bizarro version of himself? And we're probably going to see that bizarro version of him sometime in the next few episodes. And so after this, we actually go back to Natalie, who is mad at Clark for looking like evil Superman. But then it shortly cuts to another flashback where we see Natalie stuck in between worlds and she's in the middle of nowhere and she's put to sleep and she later wakes up six months later as they find out where exactly John Henry Irons, her dad is. Well, not exactly, but they kind of get like a signal at least. And so that's where she heads off and, you know, she eventually ends up on Earth Prime. But the place where she's actually stuck is in between the two Earths. And so this is definitely a cause of crisis on Infinite Earths and it's interesting to see how Superman and Lois is finally linking the events of what happened after Crisis to the show. But then we go back to Ali who is being questioned at the DoD by General Lane. He gets very emotional because he thinks that Lucy is dead and he's convinced Lucy is gone and Lois has to calm her down. It's actually shortly after revealed that Lucy didn't go in and that she stayed out of the mines while she was in there but she actually escaped and she supposedly listened to Lois's warnings however this is twisted at the end of the episode where we get the reveal which is quite a shock if I'm going to be completely honest but now when I'm looking back here I'm like okay I should have expected this but Lucy drugged her dad because she was in fact the failsafe for the mission in case Ali wasn't able to make it to the other world. And so she drugs her dad, she takes his DOD pass, and she's going to go into the DOD and try and save Ali so that she can be freed and go to Bizarro World. Maybe by finding another way of going in, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to go about doing that. But a big question, and I think, you know, they don't want us to think about it, is how is Lucy, when going in there, going to go into Ali's room and then just walk out the DoD. Someone's going to stop them, but I don't think they're going to look into the logistics of that because if it was someone like Superman who went in to save a prisoner and, you know, get that prisoner out of there, he can do that because, you know, he can avoid the kryptonite bullets and stuff. But Lucy and Ali have no superpowers and they don't even have, like, the pendant or anything to assist them or ex-kryptonite or anything like that. But let's move on to talk about Jordan. So Jordan ditches on Sarah because of his injuries and Jonathan and Jordan have like a little talk at the end of the episode and obviously still things with Jonathan are very frictional with the family. He started a new job and everything in this episode and he has to do his classes online in order for him not to get expelled but also continue on with school because he isn't willing to reveal that Candace is the dealer, and no one else surprisingly has revealed that she was the dealer. I'm sure so many people know it. Like, even the thug in this episode that attacks them actually knew it, so he could definitely reveal that information, but he's not gonna do it because Jordan whipped his ass in this episode, and obviously, Jonathan said that, you know, he would send this guy, you know, this mystery figure, back on that guy if he comes near Candace or him again. 
and so that's where we leave off with those characters. And at the end of the episode, John Henry Irons and Natalie visit the new apartment. I don't know who exactly owned it, but someone that Clark used to know, and for some reason he has the keys and it's basically open and free, so that's good on them. And then at that point, Natalie actually has another flashback. This is a final flashback of the episode as she picks up on her dad's location and that's pretty much it. So they didn't actually resolve anything too much in regards to what actually happened with Natalie, apart from, you know, filling in some of the blanks, although I don't think it revealed too much. I think the big thing in this episode was definitely to do with the people going over to Bizarro World and what's going to potentially happen with Lieutenant General Mitch Anderson with him having the pendant in Bizarro World. But that's pretty much it for the episode, so it ended with Lucy's cliffhanger. But if we quickly talk about the trailer for next week, it's very interesting. So next week's episode is titled 30 Days and 30 Nights, so presumably maybe Clark goes missing for 30 days and 30 nights, that is a long time. Because what's shown in the trailer is that Superman is missing and Clark is missing, the family even talk about it, and it seems Jordan is wanting to step up in order to help find their dad and actually figure out what's going on. I don't know if this is because he's somehow gone over to Bizarro World and that's where he exactly is, and that's why no one on Earth can find him because he's not on our Earth and he is in the alternate Earth in Bizarro World. So that's one of my theories after watching the trailer, and we'll have to wait and see what exactly happened next week, but I'm very much so looking forward to it because it's an intriguing premise that Superman is missing and Jordan has to step up on Earth and they're going to be looking for him, and maybe we'll get some insight as to where exactly he goes by seeing from Superman's perspective. But that pretty much does it for this video guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications to not miss any future videos, leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this. Also you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.